as an American, there's one thing I despise more than my own country, and that's the monarchy. Bored into power with control over others? Pretty cringe if you ask me. That includes the Brits. I see you with your king. The One Piece is real. So yeah, I sneered at the thought of a children's show about a King Sentai fighting bugmen. As an intellectual who looks down on others for watching children's shows, I watch King Ozier, a children's show that I adore. The current airing of Super Sentai, for, for those who don't know about Sentai... Wait, what? Never mind. I don't care. Okay, it's that thing that Spyrim was doing in the 70s. Okay, backstory over. King Ozier follows the tyrant King Gira, a man who desires to take over the world because he sees Rackless, the king of Shu Kingdom, as a villain because he rules for power not to protect his people. Not like a real king, or I guess that is real king-like. The world of King Ozier is split between five kingdoms. Shu Kingdom, ruled by Rackless as stated before. It's your standard Final Fantasy Kingdom being both post-industrial yet somehow still stuck in the 13th century and contributes nothing to society or the world in general. They somehow become the most powerful nation? I don't know how. They do not even contribute their own food, arts, or technology. In every way, it is pretty standard and not really interesting except that gear is from there. It's ruled typically and it has a standard monarchy. Truly a cruel and evil place that shows the horrors of kings. Next we have uh, Enkosapa, the, the blue kingdom. The kingdom that's not really a kingdom? They, they elected a president as their leader. And as a result, it's the best place to live at, honestly. It's a technological haven where science breathes and expands, but they aren't nerds. Everyone here is a punk that has hacker duels to determine all affairs. It's a country ruled by dueling and elections as well. This is the greatest kingdom ever made. I would desire where all issues and voting are determined by dueling. Kino. Fucking Kino. Also, all technology in the world comes from there. President Shirokara leads his people bravely, but his nature works against him because he's a punk delinquent who easily is triggered and gets into fights with everyone. As every nation in this show is, they are all governed very, very poorly. Ishibana is the land of medicine and art, and in this universe, it's dystopian as hell. Every single doctor in the world comes from one kingdom. Can you imagine having to go across the world to see a doctor? In a recent episode, we get a map, and they're all far away from each other. It's insane. I honestly feel bad for anyone that lives in any other kingdom that doesn't have doctors. Ishibata must be so rich because they have a medicine monopoly of the world. Does that make it the kingdom of Big Pharma? Yes, yes it does. Himeno, their queen, is evil. Great character, but evil and Big Pharma. I'm just saying what we're all thinking. Gokan is the prison where every single person was a criminal at some point. So either Gokan has a great system for redeeming its criminals or it's awfully horribly governed and people just go to jail for simple measures. We are not sure. We do not know the laws of the land or how prosecutors really go about. Am I expecting too much out of a children's show? Probably, but uh, I, I like to overthink things. It's funny. Tofa is the last kingdom and is the breadbasket of the world. Literally, if they didn't exist, the world would starve. All food comes from them. Which isn't strange, but for nations, because these are city-states that trade with each other, they're just horribly structured that without each other, they could not function as societies at all. It's weird. Also, it's your typical japanese base country. I should talk about the elephant in the room, the CGI the show has and uses. King Ozier got a massive budget increase that uses virtual sets, something that was pushed by the Mandalorian. And here, while the technology is impressive, has not worked out the best. At times, the floor shakes when the camera pans, the world looks strange, and no one feels real in the world. It looks jarring a lot of the time. The characters never feel like a part of the world, merely existing in a green screen abomination of a world. It feels fake. While expecting Mandalorian quality is a bit excessive, it doesn't stop the fact that it looks a little fake. It gives similar vibes to looking at bad anime characters CGI in the background, and it pulls me out for about the first five minutes till I hear the funny sounding words. And then, like a seal, I clap my hands into happiness and scream along to the opening. But for those five minutes, it's painful. <laughs> what the fuck? I guess that's accurate. I get eventually I start ignoring it. <laughs> it still looks like shit. I'm not taking that back. It looks bad. It looks bad. I hate it. 
I wish they used sets, because the costumes look so fantastic. Every character's design is wonderful and appealing and great. The monster costumes are great as well. The mech looks cool most of the time when it's not CG. Japan CG is really bad, and I don't like J Japanese CG at times because it looks bad most of the time. Each monarch has over the top and sells their personality from their design. For example, Himeno, the yellow sentai who dresses in large dresses and flaunts her and Randian beliefs of selfishness. You see, every king has a bad leader trait that is very common in the monarchy. Himeno believes that the world should follow their own dreams and live for themselves. So every action in the show she makes is pure selfishness. Though, to be fair to the rest of them, they're all equally selfish in their own rights. She just admits it, which is honestly probably the best thing about her, is that she admits that she is selfish. But she also treats selfishness like a virtue. She tries to scheme against the other Sentai for her own goals, and she has, like, destroyed someone's house just so she could get a better view because she thought she deserved it more. And while the person who got kicked out of their house got a new home, that's not an excuse. Someone lived there. Someone... It could have been a long family home. We don't know the details of them, but if someone came to me and said, I'm gonna destroy your house because I want a better view, but we're gonna give you a new house, that's still pretty bad. I, I feel weird that I have to explain that forcing someone to move out of their house for a reason for the reason of seeing a pretty sky is bad. Yama, as discussed, is a bit dumb, brute, but he's smart with tech. He he will punch someone because he gets annoyed with them. He he will not think things through. He, he's a brute, and he will just fight people, and it's great. Kaguragi, he is a schemer. He is the manipulator. He is almost a Machiavellian if he was more clever. He gets close to you, then stabs you in the back. He will famously say, Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, which is the greatest fake crying sound I have ever heard in cinema or fiction in general. This is the best character. Every character in the show is great, honestly. Every one is so amazing. I, I, they are all funny as hell, and I love every character except except for one, who we'll get to soon. Also, he uses poisons. He's the only character to actually use poisons. And you can never tell whose side he's on. He backstabs Gira and Rackless multiple times within the first 12 episodes, and neither side's really aware that he has betrayed both sides. They, they both think he's on their side. It's kind of hilarious how they're easily both manipulated by this man who's very obviously manipulating them. Though, in the most recent episode, we learned that Rackless has his sister captured, and he could still be a rogue agent. He's definitely not working for Rackless out of love, but mainly fear. It's still possible he is working for his own self-interest after he saves his sister in the coming few episodes. Rita, another character I would say is the best character of the entire show, states that they work from a place of neutrality, but regularly abuses their power to help Gira. In the duel between Rackless and Gira, Rita faked the announcement that Gira died because Rita wanted Gira to win the fight. That's not neutrality. They are evil. Evil! Gira, the main protagonist, claims to be a tyrant, but he's easily tricked, thinks highly of himself, and is outmaneuvered consistently. He, he doesn't really have a goal upon being king or how he's going to accomplish that. He just says, I'm going to become a tyrant because he, he has played growing up as the tyrant of everyone so everyone could be the hero. He's trying to make the world better by being a self-proclaimed tyrant. His play doesn't really make sense, honestly. The entire cast is a dysfunctional group and they are a joy to watch. To see them bickering and scheming to hurt each other, to gain more power over the other, like real monarchs. They cannot see far ahead or plan, and in many ways, the only reason Rackless is the main villain is because he's the one who made the move first for a power grab and doesn't like his people. But everyone has also attempted a power grab multiple times. Every member has tried to kidnap Gira so they could steal his power of being able to summon King Osier. They're all equally bad, honestly. Rackless is just portrayed as the main villain, but honestly, any of them would fit. Gear is the only one who hasn't attempted to try and make a big power grab, funny enough, even though he claims to be the tyrant. And I think that's because of his room temperature IQ and his constant confusion at everything going around him. They are all terrible people, and I adore it. Gear has good intentions, but he does seek to overthrow all the world governments to make himself emperor of the world because he thinks he can fix it, but he has not proclaimed ever how one could fix the world. As Yang Wenli put it, 
Last but not least, Rackless. He manipulates his people. There's this one guy, this one fat dude in every episode who thinks Rackless is the coolest guy imaginable and will constantly cheer and falls for every single plan that Rackless puts up. And it's funny every time. And I don't mean that as a joke or an insult. It is literally the funniest shit in the world that there's this one guy who falls for Rackless's most simple and basic plans. I fucking love this show. He doesn't care about his people, and he only seeks to grow his power more and more and more. The only difference between him and our heroes is that our heroes like the people. Himeno did destroy someone's house. The president of the Water Electricity Tribe, he's uh, surprisingly the uh, most good person because technically by the rules of his own society, he has democratically deserved his position and has constantly done things to help his people. He has done the least tyranty things, it's just... He's not a great pick for a leader because, well, he's not that bright. None of them are, honestly. Oh, yes. But I forgot the most recent character from the most recent few episodes. Yeah, Spider-Man, or Jeremy Brazier. Br Brazier? Jeremy Brazier? Jeremy? This guy is both Bugnark, the, the main villains of the show that I have neglected to comment on in any meaningful sense because they honestly don't matter at all. They just exist as a template of evil villain. They live underground and they're bugs. What, what do you expect? You want more? You want more lore than that? Uh, they were... They, 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 they tried to destroy the world 2,000 years ago, okay? You good? You good? Cool. I'm not explaining more. <laughs> the Bugnarks only exist to be problems for the main heroes striving on world conquest. Jeremy is also part human and wishes to rule and protect all people, especially those who do not fit in certain boxes and are strange from the outside world. Yes, Jeremy Brazier says trans rights base Jeremy. I love him, and he's broken as hell. This man was from 2,000 years ago, and was playing the main villain and the narrator of this entire story from episode one. It is incredible that the narrator is a character who wrote every legend that is referenced in this show, all of it, to manipulate the world events so he could save all people and rule it all. He is Machiavellian as one can get. His plan's been going on for 2,000 years, and everyone fell into the plan. No, to be fair, to, you know, to take a step against him, he... They are all really stupid. To give him another plan, I did not see this coming. I did not expect that the narrator of the show was the... was a dude who was scheming this entire time. He lives to sell stories and hates spelling it out for you. He is amazing! Jeremy, you are the best thing to happen to King Osier. Somehow a show that is consistently getting better and better. In so many ways, King Osier is anti-monarchy. It shows time and time again how selfish, bad, and dumb the kings are. And even Jeremy's surprised by the fact that the kings are pretty bad. He expected more. They are dumb and selfish. A true representation of the monarchy. Now that Jeremy has entered, the main villain has become a joke. One of two things will probably happen. Either Rackless will become an actual threat, or Gira will just actually become a tyrant and maybe become a true villain as he is the only one that controls King Ogre. And I don't know, it'd be fun if Gira became the main villain. Or, you know, the, the, the Bugnarks became a threat somehow, but somehow I don't feel like that's gonna happen. Destroy King Rackless! Uh, subscribe, uh, subscribe for more Toku videos.